Well, does anyone here have something that's really special to them, even though on the outside it might seem quite ordinary? For me, it's the humble gum wrapper. Now, to you, it might just seem like a piece of rubbish, right? But for my girlfriend and I, it actually has a really special meaning. See, every year, I've given her a little origami flower made out of a gum wrapper. It's actually how I asked her out. So even though it seems like just a piece of rubbish, because of the relationship that we have with each other, it's actually got a lot of meaning. And we kind of see that in our passage tonight. See, the people of Jesus' day think that he's just some normal guy. But when you have a relationship with him, he becomes even more valuable than you could possibly imagine. Let's check it out. We'll start with verses 13 and 14. I'll be up on the screen behind me as well. When Jesus came to the region of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, Who do people say the Son of Man is? They replied, Some say John the Baptist, others say Elijah, and still others, Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. So who is Jesus? The people around in Jesus' day seem to have a bunch of different ideas, don't they? Some say he's this, others say he's that, maybe he's this dude, who really knows? There's all these mixed opinions. I mean, they could see these miracles that he was performing, they knew that he was some kind of prophet or messenger of God. But they just hadn't quite put it together yet. Let's keep reading verses 15 and 16. What about you, he asked? Who do you say I am? Simon Peter answered, You are the Messiah, the Son of the living God. Peter's journey with Jesus through all these incredible moments, and finally, it's all pieced together. Jesus is more than just a messenger from God. He is God. He's the Messiah. Now, Messiah is not a word that we commonly use these days, but it means anointed, someone who's chosen to lead. So when Peter calls Jesus the Messiah, he's saying that Jesus is the king, the king promised by God in the Old Testament, who would one day come and save his people from sin, from death. I think it's so easy to only have a small picture of who Jesus is, to capture just a part of him. But that doesn't do him justice. It'd be like calling a cyclone a sun shower. Like, sure, a sun shower's got aspects of a cyclone, it's got rain. But when you compare those two side by side, there's... There's no comparison. Something that I hear often is that Jesus just wants everyone to be nice to each other, to be kind. And while that's a nice picture, there's no real authority or lasting effect from that. Don't get me wrong, he does call us to be kind to one another, but he also calls us to follow him. He calls us to transform our hearts and change how we live as a result. See, the real Jesus, he has power, power over sin and death. He's the Messiah, the Son of the living God. God doesn't want us to know about him, though. or He doesn't just want us to know about him. He wants us to respond. In the next part of our passage, he shows us how. Let's read on, verses 17 to 20. Jesus replied, Blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for this was not revealed to you by flesh and blood, but by my Father in heaven. And I tell you that you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church and the gates of Hades will not overcome it. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Then he ordered his disciples not to tell anyone that he was the Messiah. Do you see Jesus' excitement here? After all the time that they've spent together, Jesus's, who Jesus is has finally come together for Peter. He finally sees Jesus as the Messiah, the son of the living God, and Jesus is thrilled. Blessed are you, Simon. But notice, though, this isn't a moment of achievement for Peter. Jesus isn't saying, well done, Peter, you've cracked the code. It's not like Peter's some New Testament Sherlock. Jesus is saying, blessed are you, Peter, for this was not revealed to you by flesh and blood, but by my Father in heaven. You didn't figure this out because you're smarter than everyone else. You understand who I am because God's revealed it to you. Just imagine if the only way to heaven was an intelligence test. If you're not smart enough, you don't get to heaven. And if that was the case, I know I'd be done for. Just the other day, I spent 10 minutes trying to find my phone while I was on the phone. So getting to heaven isn't about who's the cleverest or who's been blessed with the right brain to be able to figure out Jesus. It's not like the X Factor. Do any of you remember that TV show? I don't actually even know if it's still on. Um, But the basic idea was that the person auditioning, they'd come up and give this performance, and the judges would decide if they have the X factor, if they have what it takes to make it big. 
Maybe you're here tonight and you see your Christian friend nodding along to all the things that the people up front have been saying, but it's almost like another language to you. Or maybe in small groups and the leader's asking a question, you feel less Christian because you don't know what the answer is. But luckily for us, Jesus isn't calling for our head knowledge. We can't figure Jesus out on our own. Someone isn't more blessed because they know a reference from the Bible. They're not more blessed because they can answer every single question in squad time. Maybe you're someone who's thinking, I just need to learn more and do more and then then I'll be all set. But Jesus doesn't want our smarts. He wants our hearts. He wants to reveal himself to us. It's never been about us. It's always been about Jesus. Just having head smarts isn't what saves you. I mean, just look at the Pharisees, the religious leaders of Jesus' day. I mean, they knew the Bible better than anyone else, but they didn't have a clue who Jesus was because their hearts were more focused on lifting themselves up than receiving this gift from God. They didn't want to receive Jesus or follow him. See, the real X factor, it's faith. It's a heart thing. Anyone can accept and understand Jesus because it's God that gives us that understanding. And he gives it to all generously. So how do we receive that understanding? I'll put three verses up on the screen behind me. We'll have a look at what they say. So John chapter 3, 16, whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. Or Matthew 7, for everyone who asks receives, the one who seeks finds, and to the one who knocks the door will be opened. Or Hebrews chapter 11, because anyone who comes to, who comes to him must believe that he exists and he rewards those who earnestly seek him. Can you spot what's being said there? It's anyone who believes in Jesus that asks to know him. Those who faithfully trust that Jesus is the Messiah. Those genuinely seeking to follow and know him. Those are the ones he blesses. If you're like me, maybe in the past you've mistaken Christianity for just a bunch of rules. But luckily for us, that's not the case. It's something far better. It's getting to truly know the God of the universe at a heart level. I mean, it's kind of like any relationship in our life. I mean, think about your friends or your families. I mean, everyone you know started out as a stranger at some point. You had to be introduced one way or another. The more time that you've spent with that person, the more you get to know them, their loves, their hates, who they are as a person. And Jesus here is introducing himself to us in this passage, inviting you to come and find out exactly what kind of king he is, his loves, his hates. In verse 21, we see exactly what kind of king he is. He's a king who's willing to suffer many things at the hands of the elders, and it's on the screen behind me. Suffer many things at the hands of the elders, the chief priests, the teachers of the law, to be killed. He did this so that God could give you that X factor. Being blessed, it's not about our knowledge. Being blessed is receiving Jesus. It's the best blessing you could ever receive. Faith, that's holding on to that blessing, letting it shape your life, making it the most important thing. Now, he's not going to force you to follow him. He loves you, so he's not going to bend you to his will. That's why only those whose hearts are earnestly seeking Jesus are able to enter his kingdom. So what happens if our hearts aren't seeking Jesus? Well, Jesus gives us a warning in the final part of our passage tonight. It's a warning not to be so focused on ourselves that we completely miss out on the Messiah. Let's have a look. We'll read verses 22 and 23. Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. Never, Lord, he said, this shall never happen to you. Jesus turned and said to Peter, get behind me, Satan. You are a stumbling block to me. You do not have in mind the concerns of God, but merely human concerns. What a turn, right? I mean, Jesus was just blessing Peter a couple of verses ago. Now he's calling Peter Satan and a stumbling block. I mean, it seems, seems fairly full on, right? But that's because it is. You see, Peter knows Jesus is the Messiah, but he's still trying to make God fit into his plan, how he thinks Jesus should do things. It's so often that we think we know better than God. We follow our own plans because it's what we want or what we think is best. We're only seeing a small picture, though. Jesus sees the bigger picture. He knows what he has to do to save humanity. He knows that we can't come to God on our own. 
If we're not careful, we run the risk of completely missing out on heaven with the Messiah. Don't let your own plans or ideas for your life make you miss out on knowing the Messiah. I want to finish off tonight with three questions for you. First one is, what concerns of the world get in the way of trusting Jesus? For the Christian and the non-Christian, it's a struggle. I'm constantly worrying about paying bills, what I'm going to do this weekend, when I'm finally going to clean those now incredibly green dishes. Often I focus so much on my own worries that I forget, hey, Jesus is Messiah. He says that even though our concerns can worry us, we don't have to be afraid. He's got the bigger picture. Jesus overcame death for us. It doesn't matter what happens to us in this world. If our hearts are fixed on Jesus, we're going to live forevermore. Second question, what things are in your world that are more important than Jesus? Is it getting the best grades? Having a job? Getting into the right friend group? Having a boyfriend or girlfriend? Now, these aren't to say that these aren't good things. Good grades are good. Having a boyfriend or girlfriend, that's good. Having friends, having a job, these are all good things. The problem is when these good things become more important than God. When you spend more time getting to know those things than getting to know God. Don't let these things be a stumbling block that stops you from knowing the Messiah. Now, last question. What things are stopping you from not following Jesus? Is there something that you do that you're not willing to give up to follow Jesus? Is there something that you've done and you feel like you're not worthy of his love? Is the idea that Jesus, is the idea of Jesus being the king of your life just something that you just can't believe? Jesus warns us these things need to change. Not because he needs more followers, but because he wants you to experience his love. Don't miss out on the Messiah, on eternal life, on the sacrifice that Jesus made for you because of these things. They're just a small picture. They won't last. God has something so much better planned for you because he knows the big picture. He has a perfect plan. I want to encourage you tonight. Open up your hearts. Be willing to accept that Jesus is the Messiah, that he has the keys for eternal life waiting for you ready for you to take if you would follow him. Don't trip over Satan's stumbling blocks in your life. Don't let a moment of pleasure destroy an eternity of joy. There's nothing more important or more rewarding than spending time with God. There's nothing too great for him to forgive. There's never a wrong time to ask God for wisdom. Ask him to reveal to you the truth that Jesus is Messiah. Jesus is king. I mean, that's the whole point of the series that we're doing here at Youth. Everything we've read so far has been building up to be Jesus being the Messiah and that full picture coming together as he dies on the cross, as he rose again to save us. Let's avoid the stumbling blocks in our lives and accept the blessing of the full picture of Jesus. I can promise you that you won't be disappointed. How about I pray? Dear Lord, I thank you that you are the Messiah. I thank you that you came so that you could die on the cross and rise again for us to save us. I thank you that you give your blessing, that understanding of Jesus to all who ask. Lord, I pray that you would give us wisdom. I pray that you would open our hearts, that we wouldn't get caught up by the world around us, but that we would understand the bigger picture of who you are. Let's pray this in Jesus' name, Lord. Amen. How good is Jesus? We'd love you to come down here to youth to hear about him every Friday night from 7 till 9.30 p.m.